Whatever was death in your life has been removed and you are born again. How? By the presence of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is what gave you life. Praise God as you see that open your Bible at 1 John chapter 2. When we look at the world today, we recognize that Jesus did say in the last days there would be tremendous upheaval. He said there would be all kinds of calamity, all kinds of destruction, all kinds of lawlessness. And if we look around us, it's crazy. It's, it's like, you know, we, we, before lockdown, we saw the world getting worse and worse but it almost seems like lockdown that just the unsaved world went just berserk that just in a few short years the totally unthinkable has been happening and you realize there's an acceleration the enemy's not messing around he wants to take this world down he wants to make sure that the gospel is silenced. He wants to make sure that the church is stopped. And even though we see things happening around us and total destruction, we have a word from our Jesus. He said in these last days, in this world, you will have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. I have overcome the world. I have overcome. I have overcome. In other words, no matter what you get into, no matter what the problem is, a whole world around you can explode. You can know Jesus has already overcome this. I'm walking into this as an overcomer. That's why John wrote, this is that which overcomes the world, even our faith, even our faith. So God has prepared you to be ready that no matter what comes your way, you have an unction to deal with it. 1 John chapter 2, verse 18. Little children, it is the last hour, and you've heard that the Antichrist is coming. Even now, many Antichrists have come, by which we know it is the last hour. Now they went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that none of them were of us. But you have an unction from the Holy One. And you, and you know all things. Everybody say an unction. That unction is the anointing. That's the word charis in the Greek. It's, the, it's not just talking about, uh, you know, charisma is a gifting. There's an anointing. And in this aspect of the unction, John is saying, because of this anointing, you do know all things. Now, this is what Jesus was describing. If you have a look at John chapter 14, verse 25, these things I've spoken to you while I've been present with you, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I've said to you. He will teach you how many things? Not just the Bible. The Word is His primary teaching. But He'll teach you whatever you need to know. You want to be a good spouse? He'll teach you how to do that. You want to be a good father or mother? There's an unction where He'll teach you that. You want to be a good manager of your staff? He'll teach you how to do that. Because most of the time when we respond, we respond out of the flesh. Something happens, the flesh responds. Instead of responding to the flesh, it's time to trust the unction. Trust that anointing. There's an anointing where he says he'll teach you everything you need to know and remind you of the things Jesus spoke to you about. John 16 verse 12 I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. However, when he, the spirit of truth, has come. Has he come now? 
Has the Holy Spirit come? You born again? Lift that hand. Say, I'm born again. The Holy Spirit has come to me. So this is today. What will happen when he comes to you? He will guide you into how much? Why? For he will not speak of his own authority. Whatever he hears, he will speak, and he'll tell you things to come. He knows what's coming. We need to be ready for these things. So come back to 1 John chapter 2. So verse 20, you have an unction from the Holy One, and you know all things. Say this, by the unction of the Holy Spirit, I do know all things. Now, your mind may not know it right away, but you do. I said you do. Verse 21, I've not written to you because you do not know the truth, but because you know it. And that no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar but he who denies that Jesus is the anointed one? He is anti the anointing, anti the anointed one who denies the Father and the Son. Whoever denies the Son does not have the Father either. He who acknowledges the Son has the Father also. That's a key thing to know. If someone ever talks to you and says, uh, you know, at the end of the day, we all serve the same God. Our language just has a different name for our God. But at the end of the day, it's still God. You know, that word in our language means God. And so we serve God and it comes from the same forefathers and all of that. I always will, if someone has, wants to say that to me, I'll just stop them and say, can I ask you one question? Does your God have a son? No, no, no. Well, then where do you put Jesus? Well, he's just a prophet. You know, he's, he's, he's one of the prophets. No, now what's happened is you've denied the son. And without realizing it, by denying the son, you've also denied the father so in denying the son you've denied the father the god then i must ask who is your god because it's not jehovah whose son is jesus then it is a demonic god it's the god of this world who's put himself in a cloak of light come on you getting a hold of this so Verse 24, therefore, let that abide in you which you heard from the beginning. If what you heard from the beginning abides in you, you will abide in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that he promised us, eternal life, eternal life, eternal life. Now notice the context is the anointing. That anointing that removes burdens destroys yokes. Whatever was death in your life has been removed and you are born again, how? By the presence of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is what gave you life. His presence in you is the life of God. And so that is the anointing. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. That Holy Spirit is the anointing. So when you're born again, it's the anointing that got you saved. And that life which you've received is the life as God has it. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. God, Jesus says, I came that you may have life and have that life more abundantly that life is the life that removes burdens it's the life that destroys yokes it's the life where you can enjoy zoe life as god has it that is the anointing eternal life hallelujah now these things i've written to you he says yeah Concerning those who try to deceive you. How many realize the devil is trying to get this word out of you? But the anointing which you have received from him abides in you. And you do not need that anyone teach you. But as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things and is true is not a lie. And just as it has taught you, you will abide in him. Now, you see, Pastor Allen, we don't need teachers. We've got the Holy Spirit. That is not what he's saying. 
Because if that's what someone reads into that, they're going to have to tear a whole book out of the Bible, Ephesians. You have to take the Ephesians and rip it out your Bible. Why? Because in Ephesians, he says that God has given some to be apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. For what reason? To equip us for the work of the ministry. So those are God's gifts to us. Now, if we didn't need a teacher, why is God giving us a teacher? See, even in Romans 10, 17, the Bible says faith comes by and hearing by. Now, you read that in context. Go back a few verses. It's in that how will you hear without a preacher? So there are things that you can build your own faith on by spending time in the Word and hearing for God's instruction that will bring faith to your heart. But there are, there's a corporate aspect of the anointing that will re-release your life through your preacher. It's important to understand that. So God deposits those gifts in your life. So what's he talking about here? It's the understanding that when you come to this knowledge, what is the context of what he's teaching you? You have an unction, the anointing to know all things. See, this is what's the difference between religion and understanding this relationship with the Holy Spirit. Is because when you have an unction, that anointing, he's gone through there. What's happening? In that you have the anointing, you know all things. Why? Because you're relating to the anointing. You're relating to the presence of the Holy Spirit. You understand that because of the anointing, he removes burdens. Jesus the same yesterday, today, and forever. The way he healed was by the anointing. The only way people didn't get healed is because they didn't receive that anointing. But everyone that said the anointing's on him, if I can touch him, I will be healed. Everyone that said, I believe, was healed. Everybody that did reach out, Jesus said, according. According to your faith, let it be done to you. What's that? All by the anointing. When you understand that, when you have that relationship with the Holy Spirit, then someone comes along and says, well, healing is not for today. You immediately, you know that is anti the anointing. You don't need anyone to teach you that. The Holy Spirit will immediately bring that. So no one can teach you out of the power of the anointing. Verse 26, these things I've written to you concerning those who try to deceive you. But the anointing which you've received, that's the anointing that teaches you concerning all things. It is true, not a lie, and just as it has taught you, you will abide in him. Now, listen, little children, abide in him. That when he appears, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. If you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone who practices righteousness is born of him. Come down to chapter 4. I wanted to encourage you. Read through that whole first letter of John. It's all talking about nurturing this presence of the Holy Spirit. Presence of the anointing. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits, whether they are of God. Because many false prophets have gone out into the world. I mean, just because someone prophesies does not mean it's from God. There are familiar spirits out there. Yeah, but he knew my dog's name and my auntie. (laughs) The devil knows that too. Hello. Hello. Many false prophets have gone. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus, the anointed one, has come in the flesh of God. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus is the anointed one, with his anointing has come in the flesh, is not of God. This is the spirit of the anti-anointing, which you've heard was coming and is now ready in the world. You are of God, little children. You have overcome them. Because he, who he, the anointing, the Holy Spirit is in you, is greater than he who is in this world. 
They are of the world, therefore they speak as of the world, and the world hears them. We are of God. He who knows God hears us. He who is not of God does not hear us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Family, if we're praying for revival in this nation, we can't just sit in our church block and harda barashanda ranga randa. You start there. You start by praying the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, but we need to be listening for instructions where you, you, yes, you, invade these places and become transformational change. You need to stand up in your school and say, not in this school. Not my children. We have to change it. You have an unction. Verse 17, love has been perfected amongst us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, we will be when we get to heaven. Hallelujah. No, as he is, so are we. When? 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 Right here, in this world, in the mess, in where we are. God, please, Jesus, just come, Jesus, just come. Jesus said, no, he didn't pray that. He said, Lord, keep them, protect them. They, they're in the world, don't take them. He even said, don't take them out. And this is what he said. So why are you praying against him? He's placed you in the world. But there's no fear in that love. There is no fear in love. Perfect. The love of God, the love of God, the presence of the Holy Spirit, the anointing one. God is love. Watch this. It flushes out fear. You do not have to be afraid. What's happening to the country? Don't be afraid. Be bold. Stand for Christ. See, fear involves torment, but he who fears has not been made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. See, as long as we're trying to love in the flesh when someone hurts us, it can change because that's not agape. Agape, it's that anointing. If I'm wet and hug you, you'll be wet. See, I can look at somebody and they can offend me and argue with me. I can look back at them and say, I love you. I'm not confused. Why? Because I dwell in this anointing. I dwell in the presence of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 1 John chapter 5. Remember I said you're untouchable. Verse 18. We know that whoever's born of God. Look up. Let me see how many are born of God. Now, will you believe your Bible? Whoever's born of God does not sin. Now, we, when you read that, you have to contrast that with 1 John 1, verse 8. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. Oh. <laughs> okay, so if I, have, I, I don't sin. Okay, now you deceive yourself. But if you're born of God, you don't sin. Can you see, if you don't understand the anointing, it can seem confusing. Hallelujah. How many want a solution? Next week. No, I won't leave you with a week. But you, we have to sort this out tonight. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. The truth not in us, but listen to verse 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we've not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is is not in us. My little children, these things are right to you, so that you may not sin. If anyone sins, we have an advocate, a lawyer, with the Father, Jesus, the anointed one, the righteous, 
He himself is the propitiation for our sins and not for ours only, but also for the whole world. So now get a hold of this. I'm going to put it in context and we're going to go and sort this out now. How many you recognize there is a chance? There is a chance. Might be slim. But there is a chance that before Jesus comes back, you will sin again. How many are at least willing to admit it's, it is a charm? I'm not saying you're going to. It's a possibility. Now, how's that possible? How's that possible? Because the sin is of the flesh. The only way I can sin is when I heal to the flesh. Now, God knows that. So he knowing in our flesh we wouldn't be able to do this. So he sent Jesus to come and take that sin, pay the price for it ahead of time, and became propitiation. means God is satisfied, the sin is paid for. But all I need for you to do is come and confess it. Because the moment you confess it, I'll forgive it. And the Bible says when he forgives, not only does he forgive the sin, he forgives the guilt of that sin and throws it far as the east is from the west into the depths of the sea and remembers it no more. Amen. So the moment you confess, he looks at someone in his mind who's never sinned. Why? Because you were in his presence. Not just because you go to the bay. You getting this? It's not just because you come sing songs. Not because you tick the block of the tithe. Not even because you're an usher or singing the worship team. Or, no. Come back to verse 18. Whoever's born of this anointed one. His anointing. Remember, the whole context is this anointing. But he who's been, been born of God keeps himself, listen to this, and the wicked one does not touch him. You are untouchable. If you stay in his presence. You getting this? I want to make sure I abide in his presence. How do you say amen? See verse 19, we know that we're of God. The whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. And we know that the Son of God has come and has given us an understanding that we may know Him who is true. And we are in Him who is true. In His Son, this anointed one. This is the true God and eternal life. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. Amen. Now you understand what the letter is talking about. Hallelujah. Family of God, you have an unction. And God has strategically placed you. We are living Christ. Have you to operate at a heaven level on the earth? It's through understanding Christ. The anointing of the anointed one. God's desire is for everyone to know that He has not only saved our souls, but that He's also destroyed the curse and everything that the enemy has brought against mankind. The day you gave your life to Jesus Christ, the anointed one, the anointing removed and destroyed every evil curse, everything. In this series, Alan Bagg unpacks what the anointing is and what it means to his children. A lot of people have come to the conclusion that Christ is kind of Jesus' sermon. Christ is a Greek word. It's not an English word. Alan Bagg will also help Scripture come alive to you as you discover through translation and meditation what God is saying to us in His Word. Translate and meditate. We can discover the power of this word. 
Get the series online at allenbagministries.org and understand the anointing. What a powerful message. Now, who can resist what comes with gaining the anointing? And the only way to gain the anointing, to gain Christ, is by giving your life to Jesus. And maybe you're watching this message today and you haven't yet given your life to Jesus. You haven't accepted Him as your Lord and your Savior. Today, I want to help you, lead you in that prayer, guide you to making Jesus your Lord and your Savior. So if that's you, I want you to say this prayer out loud with me today. Say this. Thank you, Jesus. Today, I choose you. I choose to serve you and I choose to live for you. I make a decision to make you Lord and my Savior. And from today, you are my everything. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. Congratulations to everyone that just made their decision to make Jesus their Lord and their Savior. Us here at Allenbag Ministries, we would like to get to you free resources in helping you build your faith and help you in your walk with God from today. So what you can do is you can make your way to our website and get these free resources for yourself. They will help you in your walk with God and build your faith from today. Now, if you are interested in learning more about the anointing and learning more about Christ, I've seen in my own life that the more I study it and meditate on it, the more God reveals how deep this actually goes. This is not a surface level teaching. It goes so deep, but it only comes from meditation and from reading and from listening and from learning. So I want to encourage you, go to our website, get these messages for yourself so you can listen to them over and over so that the anointing can become real to you. Well, praise God. Family, thank you for joining us on Wisdom for Life. I'm Joshua Bag, and Jesus, is Lord and life is a choice choose life bring the net to shore remember who it was for seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness more than 